Good day and welcome to the Super Data Science YouTube channel. Today we continue our custom chart series by looking at destination maps. So destination maps gives us the opportunity to showcase data between two points and start and end location, as well as additional attributes on top of that. The data we're using today is obtained from the Kaggle website and is published by the Department of Transportation within the US. It is flight delays and cancellations in 2015. We will only be using a subset of the data, which is January 2015, and only focusing on delayed flights. Let's have a look at the data. So the first file we will be using is the actual delayed information, whereby we can see which airline has been affected, what the delay had been, the date, as well as the times of the scheduled flight, the flight number, as well as the destination and origin airport. As we do not have the coordinates for these airports within this file, we'll also be joining to the airports file. This file contains the airport code, airport name, the city in which the airport is, the state as well as the country, and more importantly, latitude and longitude of this airport, which is needed for this visualization. Creating our destination map will be done within three steps. Firstly, we'll connect to our data and do some basic data wrangling. We will also be using a union of data. Next, we will create a route. The route is very important for this specific type of visualization as we need to specify a start location as well as an end location and an order in which the route has been undertaken. It's also very important to have the airport coordinates, which we'll join in. And once all of that is done, we will have do the fun part, which is the visualization part. All right, let's start by connecting to our text file. The file is called US Delayed Commercial Flights 2015. It's a CSV file, and it's a straightforward join into that. All right, um, as per the file I showed you earlier, is um, we've got the airline information, the delay information, as well as destination origin airport. Now, for the destination map, we need to create each of these lines into two separate records, one for the origin airport and one for the destination airport. Now, the easiest way of doing it here would be to create a union um, by using this exact same file. So let's just have a look at unions quickly. So a union is basically saying we're taking all of the records from table A and all the records in table B and having the same structure and putting on top of each other and in essence, appending each of the files into this view. We do this in Tableau by taking the file as we have it down there on the left-hand side and dragging it on top of, well, almost on top of the existing file. You'll see as it comes closer, the new box gets created called drag table to union and make sure that it is highlighted in orange and just drop it. You will see that it will perform a little bit of a um, query at, in the background. And that literally just adds on another copy of the file to the existing file. No, it's not a join, it's just a normal append. Remember that. All right. If we want to see what has exactly changed, we'll just update the data. And you will notice that at the end, a new file has been created. As you can see, the new column is called table name and gives us the description of the table that has, this has been, um, this specific record has been derived from. You can see this one is called US delayed commercial flights.csv. Um, and if I just increase the, number, the record count, um, I will show you at the bottom. Uh, it's obviously just refreshing the view at the bottom that our records were duplicated because now it's showing a .csv1. All right. Also, the number of records has exactly doubled. Going back to our approach to creating the root, um, we also need to create a root identifier. Now, that is derived from using the origin airport as well as the destination airport in creating that as a sort of a key. Now that is done using a calculated field. Um, and let's just call this the root identification, root identifier actually. And we'll use a normal concatenation function within Tableau. So we'll use the origin airport and we will just concatenate firstly a underscore just to split the two records for our own view. Um, by taking then obviously the origin airport and adding on the destination airport. Let's click OK and have a look at what this field looks like. 
All right, so you can see this is the um, origin San Francisco to airport CLT. Okay. Now for each route identifier, we also need to create another field. Now this field we will call the route order. And that's in essence saying the first record for this route, so which is San Francisco to CLT, we would like to just extract the origin airport. And that we'll also be using as the original record from this data set. We, this, the second record we're creating will use the same route identifier, but the location will be based on CLT airport. And that will be using the record at the bottom. To do that, we will create another calculated field based on the table name. Um, we will call this the root order. And the root order basically specifies the start and end, and we assign a 1 or a 2. So this is a normal if function that we'll be using, and we will say if the table name is equal to the first table name, and we can just copy it from there and paste it. Let's just remove the additional information added in there. So basically saying if the table name is equal to the first table name, then we will output a 1. Else, we will output a 2. And let's just end off the if statement. Let's hit apply and say OK. All right, so that field you can see now is linked to the root identifier. And if I just scroll down, you will see them changing at the bottom. Uh, let me just find the first record. Um, and as we've seen, it was SFO CLT. So this specific record is then linked or will then be linked to this specific record. But we still need to create a, a single field to show what the location is. In the first root order, it will be SFO, and in the second will be CLT. We once again create that using a calculated field based on the table name. All right, so let's do calculated field, and we call this root location. Um, exactly the same if statement, so if the table name is equal to, let's just paste that table name from earlier, so this is the first table name. Then the root location should be equal to the origin airport, as this is the start of this specific trip. So we can type origin airport, else we will be using the destination airport. And let's just end off the if. Okay. So that will create us our new field, um, and things are taking shape, it seems. So as you can see, for one, it's SFO, which is our origin airport, and for the two, it would be, as an example, the destination airport. To join the airport file, we will just drag it into the pane over here, and we obviously need to select on which field will be joined. So we will be joining on this new route location field to get the coordinates for either the arrival or departure airport. But you will notice that this route location is not on the data source as it wasn't a field which came from the um, original file. However, Tableau does allow us to create a um, new joint location. So what we'll do, we'll just close this for a second. Obviously, nothing is joining. And we will just be using this exact um, if statement. And we'll copy and paste that in there. Let's copy and go into our join and say create a new join calculation and paste it in there. So this would obviously give us the output that we need to join on. And we can just say OK. So on the left hand side, it will basically give us the root location, which is correct. And on the airport side, make sure to select the IATA code, not airport because that's the description, but the IATA code. Um, once that is clicked, the tableau would obviously do some joins in the background. Um, and once they're done, we will be able to see the output. Let's just close that. So in this case, we have, for instance, the root location, which is the departing airport, San Francisco. As you can see, now that it's joined in, we've got the airport called San Francisco International, the city and the state that it's in, as well as its, its exact coordinates. And that will be done straight through for all of the records. Our data is prepped up and ready for the visualization. So we click on sheet one. I would just like to change this grouping. It's just my own preference to rather see the fields like this. And we'll start off by just double clicking the latitude and longitude to create them into the 
the actual uh, map. All right. Next, we need to just be sure that we use the root identifier as our detail, as that's the level we want to display our visualization at. And what do we want to display? Is obviously the, the arrival delays, and we can drag that into our visualization. You can see that it actually created a sum. For this purpose, it would be better to show the average delay, not the overall delay, but the average delay of each of these flights. Um, and we would be able to see which have the biggest average delay. Next, we just change our visualization to a line graph, and you will see a very strange looking line graph, which doesn't make an awful lot of sense. And this is where the magic comes in. So you will recall we created the root order field. Now the root order was the start and end of the actual route, one being the departure and second being the arrival. And I'm not sure if you've used this path option here before, but um, that helps us to show the lines between the start and end. So by dragging the root order onto the path option over there, you will see that now it has collect, connect them properly. It does look like a little bit of a mess as um, we, we have a lot of information on there. So let's clean this up a little bit. We can clean it up by using the origin airport as a filter. Let's just use all of them, say so, okay. And let us also just include this filter. Change it to a single dropdown as we would be focusing on one airport at one time. Um, as an example, let's look at JFK within New York. And immediately you can see uh, the, it is much better tidied up. So we've got the origin airport in the middle and all of the remaining ones, which are the destination. Okay, great. Let's even improve further on this and make it look really good. First thing we'll do is uh, we will add on the arrival delay as bubbles at the end of each of these lines to depict the um, airport, the arrival airport. And we will use rather thin lines. As you can see, the information gets quite, quite a bit lost using um, the, the thickness of the line as the, as the delay. So what we'll do is we will um, create two separate, or we'll basically duplicate this uh, map and we will overlay the bubbles on top of this. The way we do that is by taking the latitude in the row shelf while holding down control or command, just drag it next to itself. Immediately you'll see it being updated and um, also at the same time, you will notice that we can control the charts individually, um, as you can see there, the, the last two, or together at the, at the top part there. Um, we will start off by firstly removing the size from, from these lines. So um, we were using the average of the arrival delay. Uh, let's just drag that out of there. Um, you can see the lines now are all the same size, but I would even just bring them a bit smaller as well to make it even crisper. Perfect. Let's fix the second one. Now here we said we would like to use um, circles or bubbles. Um, as you can see there, it's as straightforward as just changing the chart type to circle. Next, we'll overlay them on top of each other, which is again very simple. Um, you just click on the latitude and the row shelf of the second chart and select dual axis. And there we go. That looks much better. What I would like to do is though, is just to increase the size of these circles so one can properly see the, um, the arrival delay. There we go. So you can see look, the bigger arrival delay, the bigger the circle, the smaller the arrival delay, the smaller the circle. Next, we will add some coloring and we will again use the arrival delay as our coloring mechanism. So we go to the options for both of the charts because we want it to apply to both. And by using the arrival delay and dragging that on top of the color option, immediately you can see it updates. But um, you need to change two things. Firstly, it's using the sum. So let's just go back to average as we want to show it as average. Looking good already. Um, but I think we can change the color to a different type. Uh, let's use red gold in this instance. Um, yeah, that looks good. You can see now, obviously, the longer delays have a darker red color. All right, um, I see also that the, the line looks a bit hazy. Uh, we can take that off here at the halo and just say none, and then we've got a nice crisp line showing it over there. Um, I think this would look great with a black uh, background, so let's see if we go to map, map layers, and change the style to dark. 
yeah, there we go. That looks great. So um, there's obviously much more you can do with this uh, by using the airlines information and so forth. However, um, I think this is where um, we can stop for today. Maybe lastly is just to look at another airport and see um, how we can get the right inf the information there from it. As you can see, it almost seems like a trend where the the further away the arrival at the airport is, the longer the delay, but it's also not true in, in such cases like that. All right. Well, it was fun having you. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Um, this will ensure that you don't miss out on some um, interesting visualizations coming up and further updates from superdatascience.com.